Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, Condo Insider is a show for uh, people who live and work in condominiums and we hope we try to bring you timely issues that affect uh, your quality of life in condominiums and I've started this series now about meet your candidates and so I have with me as my guest today uh, Ikaika Hasi and he's a candidate for council, City Council District 6. And uh, he'll be running in this, this year's election. And I wanted people to meet him and discuss with him because, you know, it's really important to have people in government who, you know, represent our issues. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody out there, you know, who lives in condo land gets to meet their candidates. And we're going to be showing uh, his um, website so if you want to, and I really urge you to contact him, get in touch with him, invite him uh, to your condominium for coffee hours, ask him more questions than I'm gonna ask him today, you know, because he might be your council member and you wanna be in a position where, you know, if you're concerned about something, you can pick up the phone and say, hey, Ikaika, you know, I remember you when you were campaigning and I have this concern and I want you to help us. Oh, excuse me. Welcome, Ben. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for joining me, Kaka. Yeah, thank you. you. Tell us about your background. So I live in Kalihi Valley. Um, I was born on the winter side of Oahu. My family is originally from the Big Island. And in fact, Max, if the slides are available, I can, uh, there's some photos there to provide a little bit of illustration. Um, not the slides are not available, no problem. Anyways, um, I'm, uh, my background is it's kind of a mix of, of different things, but always have been very engaged in, in our community since I was since I was a kid, literally since high school. I was active in, in local, you know, local affairs. Um, my my day, my day to day work is around climate and decarbonization. I'm working on a project, developing a project that pulls carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to make a carbon neutral jet fuel with the goal of decarbonizing aviation for Hawaii because it's our single largest source of greenhouse gas emissions. And you know the, the thing that, that keeps me focused, okay, the slides are ready. If you want, you can put them up, Max, thank you. Yeah, sure, let's do it. So yeah, that's, that's me, my name, and my Twitter handle and Instagram handle. It's my family. And what I was just gonna say is that the, the thing that keeps me motivated and kind of going every day is thinking about the world in which our children and all future generations are gonna be living, you know, the, these, we live in such difficult and um, sort of insecure times. You know, just I was a few minutes ago reading um, Twitter, which I probably shouldn't do very often, but they're talking about how and right now in Ukraine, in Ukraine, Putin is attacking a nuclear power plant. And that just, you know, <laughs> it just sounds crazy, you know, and um, so there's so many things that we're dealing with right now, both internationally, globally, but also here at home, you know, we have the rising costs of living. It's a million dollar median um, cost for a house. Uh, we have, you know, certainly COVID, but then we have things like the Red Hill water issue. There's a lot of, of concerns that local people have. And, and I think a general feeling that Hawaii really isn't working well for local people. And I, I am a believer actually that government, and you're welcome to advance to the next slide, Max. I'm not sure what the next slide is, but hopefully, anyways, these are, these are some of the neighbors in, in your neighborhood. Um, I'm a firm believer that government can play a positive role in, in terms of making things, in terms of making life just a little bit easier for local people. That's, that, that I think should be the, the thing which drives everyone in, um, in public office. It should be the way that we think about government. Uh, and and I, I, what I mean is that I think we should take a leadership role. And so for things like this, uh, like the, you know, the fire sprinkler issue, you know, if, if we're going to mandate these things, we should certainly be helping to finance these changes, these, these what are really unfunded mandates. And I want to just shout out to Carol Fukunaga and also to Heidi for their leadership, you know, in, in the Permitted Interaction Group and for thinking through these issues with our community. Um, I, I really value their leadership on these, these, uh, on these things. And uh, my, my kind of, you know, quick take, you know, and, and certainly as someone who's not I'm not in the chair, you know, Carol's in the chair and I'm glad that she's there. Um, but my, my quick take is that, um, is to follow her lead and to support, you know, um, slowing down the process, make it more easy for, for condos to convert um, and to make the, the necessary upgrades if they truly are necessary. 
And you know, I, I think the city should be on the side of the condos and of the associations in terms of making it possible for them to get this done. And the thing I think about too, is that it's not just about the, um, you know, we're, you're talking about condo land, Jane. Yeah. And I know that the audience for this show is gonna be condo dwellers and, and professionals in real estate. But I think that there's a broader, there's a broader theme that we need to pull out of this, which is that, you know, we're requiring a bunch of changes. You know, we're requiring, for instance, upgrades for folks living in more rural parts of the island to upgrade their, you know, sewer systems and um, septic and all that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, just on the other side of the island, there's a fish pond, a Hawaiian fish pond that's hundreds of years old. I think it's like 800 years old, but it's unable to produce food because upstream of it, there are, there's the danger of, um, you know, of, of waste going into the, into the water system. And, and it's only because we can't finance the upgrades of those upland upstream, you know, systems that, that we can't produce the food at the fish pond. I think that we need to be in the position uh, in terms of the city and county of, of helping to make those sort of upgrades as well. And we have a broader series of obstacles that we're going to be facing in the next few years. You know, this decade is the decade of the climate transition. And we have to be thinking about what can government do proactively to address all of these hosts of concerns. So, you know, the, the strategy that we take, I think, with the condos should be instructive for how we approach all of our broader public safety and public, you know, um, issues for our island. And that's what I think about it. It's, we have to think about it as our island. How do we make it better for everybody, including the residents of the of the condominiums? All right, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And you know, uh, when we uh, when we put the headlines out for the show, I put down the uh, area for District Six is Makiki downtown and Mo'ili'ili. And because of reapportionment, you told me that that's all changed. So what area? What what does what what area? are you representing with uh, with district six yeah so the reapportionment commission i think it was in november that they changed the, the the lines and so right now council district six runs roughly from kalihi to uh to ward avenue and okay. it seems to cut most of makiki out so i wouldn't really say that makiki is part of of council six um but you but still it, have downtown it, right Still have downtown, absolutely. Downtown Chinatown, Kaka'ako, very important. Um, you know, kind of the, the heart and soul, the culture of our community uh, is comes out of those areas. And, and lots, lots of condos. Lots of we condos. Lots of condos. That's right. And we have Kalihi, you know, where a lot of our industrial work is done. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very, it's I, I think of Council Six as really being the heart of Honolulu. It's it's the it's this really important region that um, that really sets the pace for the rest of the state. And you know, I think a lot of people don't realize that the city council. I mean, you you have you have a whole lot of influence and control over how life is affected for people who live in condos. I mean, the city's in charge of rubbish removal and bulky item pickup. And you know, and 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 one of the bones of contention, and you'll find this out. Uh, you know, uh, if if you get elected to the city council, uh, you, if an issue comes up on real property taxes. The condo people are going to come and 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 start, you know, screaming and yelling about, "Hey, we pay property taxes, but we don't get free rubbish pickup. We don't get city services." And you know, uh, that you know, that's that's something that you're going to have to deal with. And you know, we've been going round and round with them, and we have gotten some concessions for townhouses, you know, that aren't as large as high rises, you know, where the city, you know, has come out. And uh, the Department of Environmental Services, you know, has allowed maybe two days of rubbish pickup by the city, and three days by the private hall. And to me, you know, that's that's uh, you know that's better than having to pay for five days of private rubbish pickup. I mean, it does reduce your cost. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we are very grateful <clears throat> to people on the city council. You know, for uh, you know, for cooperating or you know, making sure that that happens with some townhouse projects, and it started with Arnold Morgado years ago when he lived in Wailuna. And when I found out about, hey, Arnold, how come you got rubbish pickup for your, you know, condo community, your townhouse community, and you know, the rest of us don't have it. And so he yeah. he, he he was very gracious, and he made sure that you know, 
those buildings that you know could get you know maybe two days of city services got them and we've been able to get the council members you know down the line to agree you know to work with uh, the 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 department of environmental services and its successors you know to do that so i hope you want to i hope you keep that in mind that when you see rubbish removal or bulky item pickup you know think of condos because i mean you, that is a big bone of contention and like sure. and and you know with with condos we're always using emergency services the police the firemen the ambulances and so those are very important you know to the to the condo people and building permits god we every condominium right we're always doing projects and everybody's grumbling about oh god it takes us for so long to get you know building permits and and how come it takes us you know a year to get these projects done and 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 that's and and that kind of segues into the fire safety ordinance which requires us to get permits and right now we just got a report for the fire department <clears throat> 360 buildings are you know subject to this ordinance yeah about you know 50 of them don't have to put in sprinklers because they're under 10 stories or they have open exterior quarters and that's considered you know safe and so they're they're exempt from putting fire sprinklers in but they still have to pass a life safety evaluation to show that the building is safe and you know when you're talking older buildings it's and you know and you look at that matrix that you know came out that the, was developed by uh, the <clears throat> the a fire department uh, you know it's challenging especially with the older buildings the problem we have is the pipes are failing the concrete is spalling and those are not cheap fixes and every building it's not that we're not taking care of the buildings it's they're getting old right and so and, and now we get hit with fire sprinklers and Marco right. Polo, they paid 5.4 million dollars. You know, and that's the benchmark we're looking at. But, oh my God, you know, and 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 out of the 200 that we know of that have submitted their LSE, only 16 have gotten passing scores. And to me, that's a nightmare when you think of all of those buildings have to get building permits. Mm -hmm. And so, what's the city going to do? They they don't have enough uh, people. Uh, but yet they expect us to comply with these deadlines. And Carol has a bill, Council Member Fukunaga has a bill that is moving, that is extending those deadlines, mainly because, it, you know, the, there's one deadline that's May 3 of this year, where all of the LSEs have to be completed. Yeah, and we're it's still- So a few weeks. Yeah, and we, we still got 75 to 80 buildings that haven't done it, right? right? And so that deadline, there's a bill uh, 37 is being moved to August, okay? So we're moving in baby steps. So we're moving that one to August, but then once you finish your, L, you know, the LSE, you have to comply with it. You have to do the fixes. Yeah. And, and now we know that there are at least 200 buildings that have to do the fixes. And even in the best of both of all worlds, I mean, if we had no supply chain problem, if we had enough, you know, labor for contractors, which we know they're not because we can't, you know, even get proposals right now to do other work. Um, how are we going to get 200 buildings through the system by 2025? That's the next deadline. All those buildings have to be in compliance by 2025, right? Mm -hmm. And and now you got a war. Right, that's going to affect the financial markets. And guess what? The condos, none of us have money set aside for fire sprinklers or fire alarm systems. So we have to borrow the money. Yeah. And get and and I and what I did is I think I sent you the Fannie Mae letter, lending letter. Yeah, now they're did. telling us that our, our units are unmarketable because now we have an LSE, which is a regulatory agency report that says we have a broken building. Right. right and we we have to fix it but yet we need to get building permits we need to get money and you know so i mean this is so you're walking into a, a hornet's nest because i hear from i hear from council member fukunaga she's getting calls from all over the island about what are we going to do can't she stop this bill 
or can she stop this ordinance? And the, the easy question is no. The ordinance is the ordinance, it's there. Yeah. I mean, but you know, so we're gonna have to do another bill. And here we are in the in almost mid 2022, right? And we have to get another bill to either suspend or repeal the ordinance. Yeah. And neither one is gonna be very popular, you know, with the fire department. Right. So Jane, I, I do have some hope and, and faith that the, you know, that the current crop of elected officials, you know, with Tommy and, and Carol and, and also the mayor, that they will in, in the short term, because this is all happening in the current calendar year, right? This is yes. before I or any other candidate would take office. Right. I'm confident that they will figure out a, a way to address this immediate pressing um, problem. Um, but, you know, it, it strikes me that I was, you know, I was just reading the the report that came out, I think it was on the 16th of February, so just a couple of weeks ago from the PIG, from the Permitted Interaction Group that Council, Member Fukunaga, Council Members Fukunaga and Suniyoshi put together, um, that, you know, these low passing rates, it's in fact, they're calling it a very low pass rate for certain LSE categories. Right. Uh, that, that, should, that should frighten us all, because what that means is it's more of an indictment, not of of the buildings, but more of the whole system that we've, that we get, this whole edifice that we've set up. Right. If all of these buildings aren't passing, it means that you have to address the whole thing. You know, it reminds right. me of, um, you know, like uh, my, my kids are in high school and middle school. If everyone in the class is failing, it means the teacher is doing something wrong. That's what it means, you know? And mm -hmm. so I, I think the approach that, that you're taking and that Carol's taking makes a lot of sense right now. Right, and you know, and so you know, uh, so you, we, what we want to find out from you is, are you going to support, you know, that that type of movement? Sure, sure. Uh, I, I mean, it has to happen right now, right? So it's it's it very well may not be on on my plate, but if it doesn't get resolved now, then I certainly would. Yeah. You know, when I would take office. Because there's also a bill, and you know, we don't think that's going to get resolved this year. That if you're going to have a mandate, it's got to be government funded. You know, I mean, you're talking about condominiums who found out only two years ago that they're going to have to spend millions of dollars to make their buildings safe. Yeah. And that's on top of the fact that their buildings are already old and, you know, the pipes are failing. The, the structure is, you know, deteriorating because it's concrete. And that's nobody's fault. It just yeah. means that they're old and, it's, and it takes money to do the repairs. And yeah. in, in my building, I mean, we're, we're, we're on our second spall repair. The first spall repair was 20 years ago. You know, so it's, it's not like it, you, you do it once and it's fixed because concrete, you know, deteriorates over time. And so you do the spall repair and it's only good for maybe 10 or 15 years. And you have to do it again because we're right by the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think there's a clear public interest in, in, in having the city play the role of, of a finance partner for, the, for this kind of thing. And you know the other issue that I wanted to bring up, Jane, is the is the situation that the condos are dealing with in terms of the insurance companies. Yes. And I would love to actually spend some time talking story with them because, you know, it it seems to me as so. I, I should tell you, I used to do um, insurance years ago. Um, my my family's business is is life insurance and um, financial planning and like retirement planning, and. I, I'm, I find the insurance world to be really fascinating because it's all about using, you know, financial vehicles and financial contracts to hopefully make people's lives better, you know, and to address the risk factors that we all live with, you know, whether it's your personal health or, you know, or some kind of, um, you know, accidental something or other happening. Uh, but the, the same principle holds fast here that it's in the interest of the insurance companies to help these buildings to address these what they would consider to be risk factors. And I would love to sit down and talk with them to see, but you know, is there a way for them to, to help finance this, uh, these important, uh, the work that they're requiring? Right. Yeah, because you know, right now the insurance companies are raising the premiums for high, high rise condominiums that 30, don't have higher percent what I'm hearing. And you know, and uh, under the ordinance, you have buildings in, in Waikiki, like the Waipuna, the, the Wailana, the, I think the Kalia is also open. They've got open exterior corridors, yeah. right? And so uh, uh, under the ordinance, they don't have to, they're exempt from putting in fire sprinklers, 
but their insurance is going up. Mm -hmm. And that just doesn't seem fair. And so if we have to pay higher premiums, you know, to make you know, to get over for the next couple of years so that the reinsurance companies, you know, can, you know, recoup their losses and, and, and normalize their operations, then so be it. But, the, you know, there should be a break for the buildings that are exempt from having to, you know, have the fire sprinklers to begin with. They're getting right. penalized for, for already being in compliance with the law. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so, so, you know, we, we should be trying to find out, you know, if we can get some kind of, you know, concession from the insurance company, you know, for, for those, for those you, buildings. You know, frankly, uh, I mean, a concession would be nice, but what, I, what I'd like to talk to them about is, can we find a creative solution? You know, are there new ideas that can be brought to the table? Um, you know, can, can they help to finance this work? If, if that means, you know, instead of instead of just playing sort of a punitive role where they're increasing the assessments, increasing the, you know, the, the, the premiums, I should say, for the building owners and for the associations, is there a way that they can actually help to address the things that they're calling a risk? And to me, that's a win win. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it helps everyone. Uh, it, it helps everyone. And also it addresses one of the one of the, the thing that really bugs, bugs me about this, you know, this this particular unfunded mandate, which is that you know, life in Hawaii is so difficult for most people, right? For most of the dwellers in all of these buildings and in most houses, right? Where everyone lives on a kind of a very thin margin of sustainability. Yeah. Uh, you know, most people are living paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, I'm, I'm connected with, um, with, with Unite Here Local 5, the hotel workers union, and, and we represent workers at Kaiser, et cetera. And the motto that, that Local 5 uses is, is one job should be enough. And these kinds of issues, like these, these unfunded mandates are, are some of the things that make it so that one job is not enough. And in fact, for, the most, for most people in Hawaii, two or three jobs are what they need in order to get by. And so, you know, we, we, need, to, we need a radical rethinking. And, um, and I say that with all of the understanding, you know, that, um, that sometimes radical ideas can be frightening and can scare folks. But frankly, if you look around, I think that we, we're in a moment right now where, where we actually need those, those things. We need to rethink you know, the, the role that government is playing in our community. Right, and, you know, and to add on to that, you know, with condominiums, uh, we're, we're known for the fact that we have two distinct populations. We have the new families, right, who can't afford a house yet. Mm -hmm. So they buy, they, they buy condo. They're the ones who live paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And so when they get hit with a high, you know, a higher increase, you know, maintenance fees or a special assessment, that's a problem. And then we have the other group, a large group of seniors, original owners. They bought 40 years ago. They've never moved out. Mm -hmm. Now they're senior citizens on fixed incomes. Right. And so it's very difficult for them. They don't have the flexibility, you know, to, to pay for special assessments. And so when, 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 when they get hit with higher maintenance fees, because, you know, now we've got to pay for failing pipes and for spalling, and now we have to do uh, increased insurance if you don't have a sprinkler. And the fire ordinance says that, fire safety ordinance says you have to put in a sprinkler. So this is a lot of money. You know, in a, it's a, in a, and and it, this is it becomes very burdensome to the, yeah. those to those two types of you know populations in our condos. Absolutely, yeah. You know, so, so I'm glad. I'm really glad that this um, that that the pig has done its work and that there's legislation moving right now through council, and um, I think we should all be supporting you know the the, the work that Carol is doing. And, 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 you know, it's not going to end with, with, uh, with Council Member Fukunaga because she's term limited. And I'm pretty sure it's going to, you know, continue on to 23. So if you get elected, can we count on your support in that connection? Absolutely. Just replace Fukunaga's name with mine and no problem. We got it. Okay. Yeah. I would be happy to carry on her work. Okay. I'm, I'm glad uh, on behalf of condo owners in District 6 and, and condo residents in District 6, let me tell you, we're very grateful and happy to, to hear that. Good, I'm glad to hear that.
And and like I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be writing this article in, in a, a business management Hawaii about how condo dwellers, condo residents and condo owners should become best friends with their candidates. So hopefully, you know, people will start listening to me and maybe you'll get a shout out you know, to, to come for a coffee hour. And I hope that happens because there's a lot of condos in your district. And, and, and you know, and I know from uh, talking to council uh, member Fukunaga, I mean, she's been there a long time and she, there's a lot of condo people that just pick up the phone and, and call her and she, you know, her staff is very responsive. And, you know, so on, on a whole lot of issues other than the fire safety, uh, fire safety ordinance. And so I, I hope that, the, you know, the, the residents in Council District 6 can, can, you know, can be assured that they're going to get that level of service if you get sure. elected. Sure, be happy to. And, you know, coffee is good at a, for a coffee hour. I'm also open for Palhana. If anyone wants to, you know, we can, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to bring a six pack and we can share some good local IPAs or something together. Yeah, there's, but the conversation is really important. Absolutely. And I want to thank you for being part of the conversation today. Uh, and unfortunately, we, we've run out of time. And but I'm 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 I want to thank you for being with me and sharing, uh, you know, sharing your thoughts. And uh, I, I wish you success in your campaign. And uh, I hope you get to meet a whole lot of you know condo residents in your district. And for those people out there, like I said, you know. Ikaika's uh, contact information was scrolling on the screen. Give him a call, invite him for coffee, do pauhana. Uh, but, you know, get to know your candidates. Get to know your candidates because when something goes wrong, you want to be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, Kaika, I, you know, you, you came to my coffee hour or I met you when you were campaigning and I voted for you. And so now I need some help. So you they don't have to vote. say that. Even if they don't vote for me, I'm still, they're still my boss. It's yeah. okay. Uh, so my cell phone number, if folks want to just text me, that might be the easiest, is 808-221-2843. Uh, Can I repeat you know, that? 808-221-2843. Okay. Thank you, Ikaika Hasi, and good luck in your campaign. Thanks, Jane. Thank you, Think Tech. I appreciate your help today. Okay. And, and thank you for the condo people who are who tuned in uh, this week for, uh, for this uh, session. And please uh, join us next week, Thursday, three o'clock for another episode of Condo Insider for people who live and work in condos. Mahalo and aloha.